caldera, tu lírica falfullera pa' afuera, jinetera. Ah. Quiero estar donde estoy, te lo doy de pana. Y si quieres mi fulana, mi fama y tu amilana, me queda mi fili... My Graduation Speech by Tato La Vera. I think in Spanish. I write in English. I want to go back to Puerto Rico, but I wonder if my kink could live in Ponce, Mayagüez, and Carolina. Tengo las venas acoturadas. Escribo in Spanglish. Abraham in Espanol. Abraham in English. Tato in Spanish. Taro in English. Tonto in both languages. How are you? Como estas? I don't know if I'm coming or si me fui ya. Si me dicen baranguitas, yo reply. Con que se come eso? Si me dicen gaviar, I digo. A new pair of Converse sneakers. Ahí supe que estoy jodido. Ahí supe que estamos jodido. English or Spanish. Spanish or English. Span English now. Dig this. Hablo lo inglés matado. Hablo lo español matado. No sé leer ninguno bien. So it is, Spanglish to matao, what I digo, ay, virgen, yo no sé hablar. So, what I really enjoy about Tato La Vera's work is that um, La Vera really is such a poet of place, such a poet of a community, and you can really see that in his work. So many of his poems are written about these things that he's gone through or these things that people that, you know, he knows have gone through. And he really captures sort of the power of these ordinary moments. And I love that about La Vieta's work. I really tried to push that in my own work talking about these things that I've experienced or these things that I've seen happen in my neighborhood or that people I know have experienced and try to extract sort of the power from these everyday moments. In terms of what I've learned here at Pitt, I would have to say that the biggest thing that I've taken away so far is just letting the poem live on its own, letting the poem do what it's going to do. Um, you know, not trying to take control of everything that happens in the poem. Just let it go naturally wherever it's going to go. Um, that it's a good thing that uh, to, to not try to exert all this control over it because the poem is sort of its own living thing. Um, and some really good things can happen when you just let it go wherever it's going to go naturally. Afro Seattleite fragment number four. Ezel's chicken. Coach Scott tells the BSA we need something to lure the white student body to our events. Someone seated in the back yells Ezel's and we dive in. Shout our own orders. Cuz, it's them spicy strips and fries. Bruh. Some gizzards and baked beans. Man, get me a 16-piece original with rolls. Lots of rolls. Maybe eight or ten. Because it ain't really about the chicken. Despite the crisp brown skin that crunches between teeth. Despite the grease. Slick enough to shine shoes which dribbles its way down cheeks. Nah. It's always been the rolls. So richly fermented, we walk around drunk off their dough. No butter, no honey, no sauce necessary. Yeast was enough. Yeast still rising. Yeast always rising. We try rising, but are never left with anything to call ours. White boys go there to get their taste of the ghetto. 
Coach Scott says. Our bodies sink back into their seats. These boys we call peers, never peeps, carry a fascination with consumption. Ivory teeth crunching brown skin, they sink into flesh, working finely tuned incisors, cannibalistic ire. They don't understand that it ain't never been about the chicken. Mi musa, mi selva,